Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and I'm so excited to be back with Christopher Melcher, attorney at law. Thank you for being here, Christopher. Well, it's great to be here, Andy. I know we uh, don't always like talking about this story over and over and over, but there have been some updates this week on the Amber Heard uh, appeal that I wanted to get your legal expertise on, as well as we didn't really get to talk about Elaine's firing. And I know a lot of people wanted to hear your perspective. So thank you for being here as we update sort of the previous stories of the week on Amber and these latest news uh, over the past couple of days, uh, particularly about this appeal. I, I want to get your legal expertise on this because there's a lot of now outlets. And this has just came in an hour or so ago from Vulture uh, discussing about can you know can she win her appeal against Johnny? Uh, a lot of people coming forward trying to sort of plant this seed that it's possible. I know you've said it's going to be a very uphill battle, but the latest thing that keeps coming out over social media from Amber Heard and her team is that new evidence is now coming to light uh, that will change the verdict. It's, it's, it definitely screams PR because I, I thought you can't bring in new evidence to these appeal hearings. You have to based on how the trial itself was done. Can you elaborate, Christopher, is there, does she have the opportunity to bring in new evidence now in this appeal process to potentially win this? Absolutely not. Neither party can bring in any new evidence in an appeal. The purpose of an appeal is not to retry the case. It's to have this supervisory court, the appellate court, look at the uh, evidence that was presented, the rulings that the court made, and determine whether error occurred that was prejudicial, meaning that it would, you know, likely could have uh, resulted in a different outcome had that error not happened. So it's really just taking a look at what occurred and uh, it and not allowing any new evidence at all, even arguments that were not raised below can't be raised here above in the appellate level. And, and the reason for that is that we're in an appeal, we're criticizing the judge we're not or the jury. We're not criticizing the other party. We're criticizing the judge or the jury saying that they made a mistake. And the appellate court won't allow that to happen on information that was not presented to the judge or jury. It just it's fundamentally unfair to say, I'm going to reverse a judge's ruling or a jury's verdict based on evidence that they never had or arguments or positions that were never taken in the in the trial court level. So that's why it's it's frozen in time. We 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 look at the transcripts of everyone who testified. That's all taken down by a court reporter put in a booklet and then the exhibits that were introduced into evidence, the arguments that were made. That's the what we call the appellate record. And we have a saying on appeal, if it ain't in the record, it didn't happen. So even if she had new evidence that just proved all of her arguments were true, she can't present it on an appeal because it's not in that appellate record. And it's just like watching a movie on a screen. You only get to see what the filmmaker decided to put within that frame. Mm -hmm. Anything outside the frame, you don't get to see as a viewer. The appeal is the same way. So this statement in here, yeah, I was going to say because it's have on screen. I want to talk about these the lawyers sure. and everything else, but exactly like getting to this point here, the lawyers made a statement, but there's a added statement here at the very end of this paragraph that just blows my mind. Heard spokesman said in a statement to E News, a different court warrants different representation, particularly as so much new evidence is now coming to light. The way this is read is just a PR line that means nothing, right? Because even the headlines are sort of running with that now as new evidence is now coming to light. It, you're saying it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't. There's two parts to that statement. The first one is correct. The first statement is, hey, we're now uh, left the trial court and we're now in the appellate court. And appellate court practice is very specialized. They have their kind of own language and procedures and it's commonplace to have an appellate lawyer represent the party at that level, not the trial uh, attorney. So the first part of the statement is new court, new representation. I agree, that is the way to go. The second part of the statement refers to new evidence coming to light. That's completely ridiculous. No lawyer would make that statement and it's not a lawyer making this statement. It's her PR person who has no idea you know, anything about law. So. Uh, I have no 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 issue with Elaine being moved out because, you know, the best representation on an appeal is somebody who handles appeals and also isn't burdened by, 
you know, all this ego and investment into their performance at the trial court level. You want somebody representing you on appeal who doesn't have all that baggage and just looking and saying, hey, this is in the record. I don't care what your memory is, Elaine. This is either in the record or not. And here are the appellate rules that apply. So no problem changing Elaine out. But there's no way that appellate lawyer is even going to attempt to bring in new evidence. Well, I want to get your thoughts, too, on whole Lane leaving, because we I did get your comments as I recorded that breaking news. And thank you for sending it over. But let's talk a little bit more in detail here, because, yes, Elaine's gone. And it does seem like to me Elaine was fired, as she should have been, given that they lost pretty badly. Uh, but what's weird is, yes, OK, you changed the new team. However, she kept Ben Rottenborn. She will continue to represent her as co-counsel. It's kind of surprising to me to see Ben still on the list, especially when she went and got this new expensive law firm of David Axelrod and J. Ward Brown. What is your reaction when you see that she did fire Elaine, but then sort of did it, you know, nicely? Uh, do you think she was saving face there? Do you think there was more of a firing of Elaine that maybe is happening behind the scenes, or could that be revealed later? but then allowing her to leave, you know, politely in the, the exit statement. And then what about keeping Ben and hiring these new guys? How, how do you react to all this? So I don't, I don't really view this as a firing, honestly. It, it's like I say, in, in, in the practice that we do, um, we have a set of trial lawyers who do the trial. And then if it goes to appeal, it's, it's commonplace for an appellate lawyer team to, to take over. It's two different courts. And so that's commonplace. The, there's really no expectation that the trial lawyer is going to do the appeal. Now, the, to your, so there's no, I see no issue with Elaine being switched out. That's commonplace. The, now the question you're raising about why is Ben on the team? Well, the, that, that, that will happen um, because this guy's got a lot of knowledge about the case uh, that the, the appellate lawyers need. Mm. So they need to understand like, okay, where do I, what happened at this trial? Where do I find it in this massive record? Because you got to imagine whatever it was like six week trial, right? all day long transcripts, all the exhibits, there's going to be a hundred thousand pages of documents involved here. And this appellate lawyer team needs to understand like, okay, what, what happened? Where do I find it? Ben is going to be the guy that's saying, oh, yeah, it happened on day five. Check out that that lawyer's testimony. That's going to pretty much be that dude's involvement. Um, the, he's not going to be sitting there arguing at the lectern on the appeal. That's for the appellate lawyer. So, again, I know, you know, you could read different things into this. But to me, this is, you know, standard operating procedure for an appeal. OK, well, I like when you keep it real. So less. So you don't think there's any uh, ill will towards Elaine. You don't think there's any shot at her or any opportunity for them to try to use her incompetence in this appeal? Well, the, the thing that, um, you know, definitely you can read into why they picked Ben over Elaine to be the, you know, kind of holder of knowledge, you know, for the appellate team. And definitely if I were calling that shot, I, I would not want Elaine being that person because she's there. She's disorganized, um, you know, kind of rabid arguments that, you know, make no sense. She is not the person that an appellate lawyer would want to look to when they're just saying, look, I need to find where this piece of evidence came out in the trial. And Elaine would go on some diatribe and misdirection. You don't want her help. She's not going to help. So I think that's the dig on Elaine is that they needed somebody for, you know, kind of institutional knowledge. What happened at this trial? They ain't going to go to, to Elaine. So that's the dig on her. Um, you know, and we'll see on Johnny's side, um, you know, is he really going to use um, the same trial team? To me, I would buys against it. And I know people are probably, oh, they're so great. Well, you know, they, they did a good job at the trial, but they're not appellate lawyers. Hmm. And it's a highly specialized area. So I would imagine that if he hasn't done so already, um, there will be an appellate specialist representing him at the appellate court as he should, because that's Again, different court, like that spokesman said, warrants different representation. And um, so I, I would imagine Johnny's doing the exact same thing, even though he may not outwardly have any problems with his trial team. Before we get to the the verdict of where you think of it, how, how likely either could win, there's one last little jokey thing here I do want to do. You, do you notice in Elaine's uh, quote here, this is the perfect time to pass the baton. I have pledged to Amber and her appellate team 
my complete cooperation and assistance. <laughs> Do you think that might be a little dig? Uh, like to choose of the word pledge or, or no? It, it, you know, it's, <laughs> it, I mean, it shows amazing unawareness for her to use that term. And, and that just kind of proves the point is there's something because when I, you know, when when the trial started, I was like, who is this Elaine person? Yeah. So I looked her up and it's like, and if you look at her website, um, her resume, she's a legit, I mean, she's done a lot. She's, she's written articles. She's given presentations to other lawyers. I mean, she's accomplished a lot as a lawyer, but then her performance in, in that trial yeah. was... It was embarrassing to watch. So I don't know what's, you know, kind of going on with her personally. But, yeah, that that was just a, a very poor choice of words. Well, there's a lot of obviously people assuming she was fired. And I'm glad there you go. There's Christopher's take on things. Take it as you will. But people are saying smart move. Does does she have an, a shot now? Can she win this? One other thing interesting out there. A lot of people were talking about this week. Morgan Tremaine, the TMZ guy just tweeted us. So Bestie got fired and replaced it, replaced with lawyers from the same firm that failed to stop me from testifying. Do I have that right? He's throwing some shade. He's getting, he's continuing extending his 15 minutes clearly as well. Uh, but I'm curious. I mean, obviously different lawyers, big firm, who knows, but uh, what do you think of these odds? And, and furthermore, it seems like Amber's argument is really to fight for this freedom of speech, right? I have this freedom of speech. You didn't give me this freedom of speech. By arguing that, isn't she almost giving Johnny the win, too, in his own appeal against the one that he lost? Because shouldn't he have the same freedom of or Adam Waldwin have the same freedom of speech that she's declaring she had? H how likely is it for either party to win this, Christopher? Extremely unlikely. I mean, appeals are almost universally lost because the the verdict is presumed to be correct. So that's the starting point. You don't presume that it's that the jury got it wrong. The appellate court presumes that it that is right, and it's Amber's burden for her appeal and Johnny's burden for his appeal to overcome that presumption and establish through the record that the judge made an illegal error or the jury made an error, and that the outcome of the case would have likely been different had that error not occurred. So it can't just be like, hey, you know, uh, this hearsay objection was overruled. I really should have been able to bring in that evidence. They also have to show that the outcome of the trial would likely have been different if that little bit of testimony would have come in. The odds are hugely stacked against the appellant. And the arguments that she's raising are extraordinarily weak. The one that she really is pressing on is this defamation by implication. And you heard her say this over and over again, which is, I never mentioned Johnny by name in this article. And so, you know, hey, I, how, how does anybody know that I'm really talking about him and he's a public figure and all this kind of stuff? Well, she testified that it, she was talking about him. So and it's clear by the timeline that she laid out in the op-ed piece that she she you know said two years ago I spoke out against it's like it could only be in reference to him right so that was a factual issue that the jury decide it's not a legal question it's a factual one so she has no no real chance of winning anything on appeal now Johnny's also appealed and the reason why he did is because he owes her two million dollars and she owes him 10.35 million. Uh, I think he tried to have that offset and saying like, hey, judge, just combine that. So she owes me 8.35. The judge said, hey, they're two separate really lawsuits that were tried together. They're two separate judgments. So no. And so he had to appeal because otherwise uh, Amber would have you know, been able to collect uh, this two million against him. Um, and so he, he you know, and and he. He, his appeal is different. He's basically going to say, and I, and I somewhat agree with, that the statements by Adam Waldman, uh, to the extent that they were defamatory against Amber, there's a question of whether or not um, those were authorized by Johnny. It's not everything that a lawyer says um, is chargeable to the client. And the, the evidence was extraordinarily weak on that point. And... Um, because Adam Waldman said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm declaring, I'm, I'm refusing to answer all those questions in that video deposition that was played during trial based on attorney-client privilege. And so every time they tried to ask Adam, uh, you know, did Johnny authorize or know that you were going to make these statements? He said, I'm not answering the question. 
And so there really wasn't any evidence that Johnny had authorized or known about in advance these statements that Adam was going to make. And so there's there's really, I mean, I didn't see any evidence other than the fact that Adam was a lawyer for Johnny. Right. Now, on the other hand, I felt that Johnny's team did a very weak job in opposing that. They focused so much on Amber's case, uh, on you know winning their case against Amber, that they spent really no time challenging whether whether Adam Waldman was acting on behalf of Johnny when he made those statements. So, you know, I, over on balance, I think both of them are going to lose their appeal. Yeah, I have the quote. I accept the instruction. The robotic uh, accept instruction. Uh, yeah, I have to agree with Christopher there. It does feel very unfair. Just they, they didn't really seem to try the case again for Adam's sake. I don't know why. And there was emails and things that could, uh, client exchanges and things that would have helped to at least cause some, you know, evidence or some some reason as to why Adam believed the, what he's what he was told uh, by Josh Drew, and uh, they never even brought it in. And it, and it, what's so frustrating, Christopher, is they left time on the table. They had time. They could have easily figured out, but slide slid in someone on their time to be like, "Hey, also for this, uh, we want to." Enter. It just seems like they just ignored it. I don't know if there was a there's a rift between those lawyers or frustrate. I, I don't know, but it does feel like something was left on the table, and it's unfair. But to, to summarize, you say uh, Amber doesn't have much of a shot at all, but you do think Johnny has slightly, maybe more of a shot, if anything. But both clearly incredibly un unlikely that either will win this appeal. That, that's right. And, and the reason is, is that the jury gets to decide what happened. And, and this is what we deal with in court is like if a judge or jury finds something to be true, it, it actually doesn't matter whether it is in fact true. It's, it's if a judge says or a jury says, hey, you did this or this occurred. That's a finding we're stuck with based on credibility assessments and the weight of evidence that we can't challenge on appeal, even though we know like, hey, I didn't do that. But right. hey, you had a trial and you had arguments, you had attorneys, you put on evidence and that's what the jury found. So I don't I although I, I seriously question whether Johnny. Well, like I said, I don't know what Johnny authorized Adam to do or not to do. That's the whole point. And, and it's like, where is the evidence? that Amber presented that that Adam had the authority of Johnny or was acting in the course and scope of his representation in making those statements to the media. We we just don't know that. So I think but still, you know, hey, uh, Johnny didn't put on any evidence really uh, to dispute that point. So that's why I'm saying I don't think he's going to win his appeal. Fascinating. I appreciate the insight. And if you aren't already following him, what are you doing? Go over to Twitter uh, and follow Christopher Melcher, C underscore divorce to get uh, insight there. His threads are always very enlightening. Always appreciate your uh, insight here. And yes, we will keep you updated, you know, more, uh, less often, but when we do, you're going to get it really good uh, to ensure you know what's happening with this appeal and updates in this case. Uh, make sure if you haven't already hit that subscribe button as well, hit the bell for all alerts, smash the like button and leave a comment down below. Uh, I don't believe we'll be live today. Sometimes on Fridays, it's harder for me, but we will be back on Monday for sure. And I may have some videos over the weekend if there's breaking news. So stay tuned and make sure you keep your eye here on Popcorn Planet. Appreciate you guys for watching. We will see you soon. Have a wonderful weekend.